Hey guys, I am Pixel Dan, and this is a review of the Masters of the Universe Origins Evil Lin, Evil Warrior Goddess. Awesome. This is Wave 1, and it's pretty great that we're seeing Evil Lin right out the gate. Uh, let's go ahead and dive right in and check out this new figure. So of course, this does come on that retro inspired card back we've seen with all of these brand new Origins action figures. I love the classic red bursting rock logo, the blue starry sky, the original Masters of the Universe logo. Really, really cool stuff going on there. Of course, we've got our Evil Inn action figure in that old school style blister bubble. Uh, you can see the mini comic behind her. It's the same mini comic that's come with all of these figures in wave one, but still there is a mini comic included. And as we rotate this card back around to the backside, once again, we are treated to some absolutely gorgeous artwork at the top. Uh, I really, really love the artwork here. The colors really pop. Uh, just really, really good looking stuff there. And then down below that, we've also got artwork depicting the cross cell, showing all six figures in wave one, as well as the little call out for the action features. But since there's no actual action features on the Origins, it just kind of shows you that you can plug her crystal ball weapon into her hand and you can articulate the figure. But this is where the action feature callouts would have been on the original packages. So all in all, really great homage to the vintage toy line. Uh, again, I got a little bit of stressing on the corners from the shipping from Walmart's website, but not too bad on this. And hopefully when you guys find these on store shelves, you'll be able to pick out a nice straight one rather than gambling with Walmart's website, but you know, they're beautiful card backs and I can totally see meant on card collectors wanting to get these for the retro appeal, but we're gonna rip Evil Inn out of the packaging and get a closer look at her. So before we get to the actual Evil Inn action figure, it's worth noting that Evil Inn also comes packaged with the Beast Barrage mini comic. Uh, this is the same mini comic that appears to come with all six figures in wave one. So if you get any of the figures, you're gonna get this mini comic, but still pretty cool little inclusion. All right, so here we go with Evil Inn outside of the packaging. I will bring in the tape measure to show you guys that she stands right there at the five and a half inch mark. In fact, the uh, little crown on the top of her helmet actually goes a little bit higher than that, uh, but she's basically perfectly in scale with the rest of the five and a half inch action figures in this line. And just like in the vintage line, and let's go and bring her in here with Skeletor, just so you can see these two side by side. So you can see the size difference between the female figures in the line and the male figures in the line. Again, it it pretty much mimics what we saw in the vintage Masters of the Universe toy line. So if you haven't already watched my Tila review, make sure you do that because a lot of this is just gonna be kind of duplicate information from that because it's worth noting that everything from the neck down, this whole body is exactly the same as Tila's. Uh, Mattel basically just kind of took the same inspiration from the vintage toy line. They reuse the parts. So she is exactly the same except for the color. Uh, you can see she's got that bright yellow she's got the dark and baby blue kind of mixed in on her outfit there uh, I will say I've got some really sloppy paint on this one I don't know what happened here but there is a whole bunch of sloppy baby blue paint over here on the side and then over on her shoulder she's got some blue up here on the yellow of her skin so that's really unfortunate that is a pretty sloppy paint deco uh, hopefully it won't be that way across the board but it's definitely something to keep your eye out for especially if you're hunting these down in retail locations so the head itself, of course, like I said, is a different head. It's got the helmet there, uh, just like on the vintage figure. She does have a bit of a different face. She's got like this little scowl. You can see like she's got the little teeth gritting scowl going on there. It's really interesting looking. So this is a very angry evil land. <laughs> Um, so let's go and talk about the articulation then. Again, same as what we saw with Tila, with that head on a ball joint so it can roll all the way around, look left and right. You got the ball-like hinges at the shoulder, so then go outwards, forwards, and backwards. Swivels at the elbow, bends at the elbow, swivels at the wrist, hinges at the wrist. You can uh, twist the waist there. You got these ball joints at the thighs that allow the legs to move outwards, forwards, backwards. They can kind of roll around there. Uh, we got the very weird looking knees. Uh, it's one thing I'm gonna keep nitpicking because they look very strange on the bare legs, specifically on the females. But you can swivel at the knees, you can bend at the knees. So it functions well, it's nice and solid. I just, I think it looks a little strange to be perfectly honest. Uh, you can swivel at the top of the boot cut and then the ankles can move forwards and backwards 
boards as well as rock side to side. So again, as I've mentioned in all of these, the articulation is actually really nice. Apart from looking a little weird in some spots, it does function well, um, and it seems all nice and sturdy. And that's one thing I will say about the construction of these figures is they definitely have a very sturdy feel. Um, so, you know, you can pose them around. They feel like they're going to be good for play. I haven't had any parts that feel too loose or too wobbly or anything like that. I got a little bit of a wobble at her thighs there, but it's not like bad. I mean, you can see that these are actually posing around pretty good here. And one thing that's really cool about these, if you haven't already seen any of my other videos, is the fact that they're totally modular. So you've got all these interchangeable parts. You can pop the head off the ball joint. You can pull the shoulder out of that socket. You can pull the wrists out of that joint. You can pop the waist off and you can remove the boot at the boot cut. So that's gonna make for some mixing and matching, but only between the other female figures in the line. Like these joints are definitely uh, smaller. They have much smaller pegs than those on the males. You know, so Skeletor can't really plug onto Evil Lynn's legs. I mean, he kind of can, but you know, it doesn't really fit on very good. But what you can do, uh, so far Tila's our only other female on the line. So, you know, if you really wanted to do some mixing and matching between those two figures, it is something that is doable with these. And again, I'm probably repeating myself from the Tila video, but I do still wanna show this for anybody that wants to know. Uh, the ball sockets are a much different size from those from the recent Masters of the Universe Classics line. Obviously these figures are much taller as well, uh, but you can see that the pegs on the Classics figures are much smaller than than the ball socket on the Origins figures. So if we wanted to take the uh, Classics Evil in head, it doesn't really fit over that ball there. You could probably force it on or use some heat or something, but you can see how much bigger the head is. I mean, look at that, it is way oversized. It's just kind of sitting on there, but it is way oversized. That is crazy. Um, you know, and it's kind of the same thing going on here. Like you can put this over the ball joint. It doesn't really clip into place, but the Origins heads are tiny on the Classics bodies. So we can't really swap heads between these two toy lines for the female figures. All right, so this time, Evil Lynn only includes one accessory, taking a page again from the vintage toy line. She's got her baby blue crystal ball wand thing. Um, unfortunately, this one is not made of glow-in-the-dark plastic. The one in the original toy line was made of glow-in-the-dark plastic, but this one does not glow. I tested it out. I was a bit bummed out that we were missing that glow-in-the-dark feature. That's one of those things I think a lot of people don't realize either, that the blue wand from the vintage actually glows in the dark. But alas, this one does not. Now she's got two gripping hands, uh, of course, just like Tila. So she can hold on to that wand in either one of her hands. Again, she's got that mean grimacing face. So she's ready for some spell casting. All right, guys, it's comparison time. I'm gonna go ahead and start by standing her alongside the vintage Evil Lynn action figure since that is what she is inspired by. That way you can see what these two look like side by side. You can see the similarities in the design and the size uh, with some differences in the choices made for the articulation and the face and stuff like that. And then, even though I had her in here earlier, let's put her alongside the Masters of the Universe Classics Evil Inn, which is a very, very different feel because those were plussed out with lots of details. They were seven inch scale. So you can really see the two different dynamics going on between these two toy lines. And that's kind of where I've been left feeling. And again, I feel like I'm repeating myself. If you've been watching all my Origins videos, I apologize. This will probably be something that evolves as I'm looking at this whole line. But you know, a lot of us are getting out of a 13 year run with classics, which was highly detailed, lots of paint decos. The Origins line is meant to be different than that. It is supposed to be a lower price point, vintage feeling toy line. And I think they're doing a pretty good job of nailing that. Uh, with Evil Lynn, I've got some complaints with a sloppy paint. I still think the knees are weird, but all in all, I think the Origins figures are still a lot of fun. They feel good in your hands. They feel like toys. And I think that they're accomplishing what Mattel's actually going for with this particular lineup. And again, these are $15 figures found at retail. So that's what definitely makes these different from the previous line. So I have to give a very special thanks to my friend, Billy, 
who goes by Thunder underscore Punch underscore He-Man over on Instagram. I'll link him in the video description if you want to check out his feed. Uh, he helped me uh, secure Evil Land off of Walmart.com when it went up for sale real fast like they've been going in and out of stock. It's been crazy. But the good news is that we're past August 1st now. These are starting to trickle into Walmart stores. I've seen lots of people finding them. And then come 2021, they open up to all retailers. So I'm really hoping, fingers crossed, that these do become a lot easier to find as time goes on. Happy hunting, my friends. Thank you guys so very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, leave me a comment down below, hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, my friends.